<laughs> Happy New Year's. It's my first um, live cooking uh, cooking demo for the year, and I'm looking forward to doing a few more later on during the during the spring, during the summer, and even into the to the fall. But hey, I'm Chef Donald, and welcome to AARP. What's ARP? If you're looking for fun, delicious, and healthy recipe, well, you have come to the right place. This is our monthly virgin cooking classes. And today's menu includes menu items. I'm doing a rack of lamb. Oh, very, very good. With a little bit of twist to it, a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of honey, and a little bit of ginger. Very, very good. And AARP is healthy living me, eating right, and going to show you how we can make a delicious meal and give you some tips on making sure you got healthy options to choose from. AARP is a nonprofit, nonpartisan member organization and has been working to promote the healthy and well-being of older Americans for more than 60 years. You can learn more about this cooking series at aarp.org slash TN and follow AARP Tennessee on Facebook. I hope you find this class challenging and, and fun and very informative. I'm going to show you that eating healthy doesn't mean sacrificing your flavors. That's the main thing. Everybody thinks by you eating healthy, you have to sacrifice your flavor. Basically, my model is eating in moderation. Eating in total moderation. You know, we older Americans, we can't sit up and eat a steak seven days a week or fried chicken or fried pork chops every day of the week. We're going to have hard nut arteries. Y'all ready to get started? Let's get this show going. Okay. The first thing I'm, I'm going to do right now, because this takes, takes the longest, is cut up some potatoes. Because we're doing, we doing a mashed potatoes. From, from the whole potato, and it's going to be very good. And what I do is, they take them, I got a rusted potatoes. I take them, cut them down the middle, then I cut them in a quarter. It takes the time off of cooking them. You know, it's, it's less cook time. Now, if you try to cook them whole, it's going to take a lot longer. If average by me doing this, it used to take at least 35 to 40 minutes at the most. I know on the recipe, I say 45 minutes. It all depends what size potatoes you use, too. Okay. Get the potatoes already. This is the, the longest uh, uh, item that I have to cook. So I, got, I already got some already ready, too, you know, so it won't be time restrained. Okay, I'm going to set this to the to the side, and I'll probably cook these a little bit later on this week and stuff, get them marinated in some garlic and stuff for the family. Okay, now we get ready to do the lamb chops. Ooh, not lamb chop, rack of lamb. Everybody say lamb chops and rack of lamb is the same, but it's two different cuts. Okay, now basic rack of lamb. Can you see it? Now, sometimes Sometimes if you order rack of lamb, get rack of lamb from the store, you have a lot of silver skin on them. Now, you can take that off if you like, or you can leave it. I'm going to trim this just a little bit. Got my boner knife right here. Yeah, just a little bit. Very, very simple. And this time of, this time of season, I went to a butcher to get my, my rack of lamb, but for us in the grocery store, you know, Kroger's or Publix, or uh, what, what is the other one? Um, it's another another store. I know I'm from Missouri, and we call it Snooks. And you might be able to find it, but I know your butcher shop usually have it. <coughs> what I usually do, like to take them up, let's cut them individually. And I take the extra extra skin off of them when you cut them, cut them down. Okay. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, now we got we got them all cut. Now we're gonna make the make the marinade. Uh, marinade. Okay, what I usually do is put them in a bag. Put them in a bag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now. Now I got all all the components that I'm gonna add to it. I got the honey right here. Slide it on in there. Okay, the soy sauce. Now, by us being older Americans, I went with the low sodium. The regular soda, the regular soy sauce contains a lot of sodium in it. And we want to stay away from that. You know, we don't need to be taking more high blood pressure medicine. Go with the low sodium. Okay. I add a little bit of garlic. Okay. And here go the here go the ketchup right here. You know, I'm adding ginger to it, but you can buy fresh ginger and it takes a while. I'm gonna be honest with you. It takes it takes a while to peel it. But second best thing you could do, since they're doing it in the grocery store, buy the ginger paste. Come out very simple. You can get it fresh and um, skin it and chop it up. But if you're at home and you don't have the time to do it, let's get the ginger paste. And that's all I do, just add a little squirt to it, about two tablespoons, about two tablespoons, one and a half, two tablespoons. I'll put that right here. Slide this back in here. Okay. Now, we get ready to do the magic now. Shake it up. Now, see, you can marinate it for three, three to 24 hours. But through time restraints, we're going to do it. We're going to do it pretty quick. Plus, I've already, I had already had some marinated too from last night. This is a, this is the one I kind of did last night to get prepared, get prepared for it. But I think I'm going to use some of these too. Okay, what we're going to do now, now make sure you preheat your oven too. Preheat your oven. When I eat my lamb chops or serve them for a guest, then I like to cook mine medium rare. No more than medium because lamb had a tendency to get tough. And you don't want it, you don't want it to get tough. Okay, we're gonna slide on over to the skillet. Remember <laughs> to slide, slide to the stove camera. Okay, we're moving over to the camera, over to the stove. <laughs> okay. I got my my tech, my technical people right here. Jessica, okay, we're gonna slide on over there. All right, yeah. Okay, we're gonna put two tablespoons of veggie oil in it. I can't see that. Okay, I'm gonna slide this. Okay, let me slide this on over. Slide this on out the way. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go there. There we go. Okay, we got we got good sight now. Okay, I got one tablespoon in there already. I'm gonna do one more. Okay, now we're gonna let that come. Come to a very scorching heat. Okay, in the process of that, you know, one of the things that I, I I find myself doing time is just rushing through it because when you're on the cook's line and stuff, you got all these different things that you're doing and you got people calling on things. But sometimes I have to find myself kind of slow it up and relax. Cooking is very relaxing especially if you're really into it. And I like to really try to take my time now. Since I'm getting old, I'm not in a full kitchen no more. I'm doing a lot of, thing, a lot of catering things right now, but it's it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm getting good at it. Okay. You want, you want to get the skillet piping hot? Okay, what we're going to do now? We're going to put the lamb chops in here. We're going to see. Oh, you hear that sizzle? You want to lay them flat down. Uh, 
Press the beat down just a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh, we're gonna get a, we're gonna get all these little the ones in that. Okay, we got them all in. Okay, we good. Okay, now I'm gonna really crank the heat back up a little bit. Okay. I wish you could smell that aroma. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, what I usually do is no more, no more than two minutes, maybe, maybe three, maybe three minutes at the most. I let them get pan seared. You want to keep them pan seared. Or you can, if you decide not to pan sear them, you can just go ahead and season them up and put them on a on a pan, uh, a regular um, baking pan, and you can bake them. Make sure when you bake them, make sure you slow cook them. Make sure you slow cook them if you're going to put them, put them in a uh, baking pan. This is just what I'm calling right here. It's called pan searing. It locks in the juices. Yes. You can get all, all the good old, the, the, the real good juices on them. Now I'm going to flip them over. Get back here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of mix them around a little bit. Oh, that, that one got, got away from me. Yeah, get that, get that juice in them. Oh, yeah. There we go. Flip them one more time. Now we're getting ready to do my favorite. We're getting ready to put them in the oven. Cut this one off. Go slide on over into the oven. Okay. We got we got first step going with the second step. I got the potatoes going, and now we got the the uh, rack of lamp is in the oven. Now we're gonna put this put this to the side, kind of kind of fold it up a little bit. I set this back here. Get this out the way so you can see. Okay, now we get ready to do the mashed potatoes. Okay, very simple mashed potato. Very 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 simple. Okay, I'm gonna slide over here to the stove again. And what I'm gonna do right now, since I took the a lot of the mashed potatoes off. I'm going to drain them right quick. Okay, here we go. Now, now, just an average bowl. Or you can do it in the pot that you cook. Make sure you drain the water off. Always make sure you drain the water off. Okay, now we got the mashed potatoes already. Okay. There we go. That's how you want to have them look at when you bring them out. Okay, we're going to slide on over here. Now we're going to do the mashed potatoes. Okay, very simple. Okay. I got some warm milk right here, half a cup. Slide it on in here. Okay. Huh? Mm -hmm. No, not yet. I'm not done. I got to do one special thing on the stove. Okay, I got a half stick of butter. I'm gonna put that right here. Then I got my favorite, got my favorite, sour cream. Sour cream is real good for mashed potatoes. Okay, now I got two tablespoons of chicken base. You guys, when you do your when you do your mashed potatoes, if you don't want to add no salt to it, get chicken base. Add your chicken base to it. And it, it will give you that sodium flavor, but it's not too much. You don't want to add too much to it because one of the things you don't want your whole potatoes to be based around salt. 
Okay, I just add that on into it. Oh yeah. Now what I'm gonna do, this always have color. Even though these potatoes have skin on, skin on, I like to cook my potato for my family with skin on it. But you can't peel the potatoes if you don't like, if your family don't like skin. What I usually do too, and I didn't put it on, put it on the recipe, I usually add a little bit of parsley to it to bring the color out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I use the whip. What I do, just mash it down. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Now see you got a little bit got a little bit of creamy right mm -hmm. here. Now, if you want to add add a little bit, little bit mashed potatoes to it, you can to tighten it up. The, you know, the kind of just make it into a like a more, I said more firmer. And I think I think that's what I I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh -huh. I just use a little bit of hungry jack. Because there's so many different ways that you can do things when you think you, that you you kind of kind of overcooked it or anything that's added to it. Yes. See the difference now? Okay, we got the mashed potatoes ready. <clears throat> okay. Now we're going to slide this out the way. And we're going to set the... Set the mashed potatoes to the side. We're giving them a lamb chop for a few more minutes. What's the time we show you? Oh, okay. Are we doing good? Okay. Now we're going to set this over here. Now we got the mashed potatoes, we got the lamb chops in. Now I'm going to cut the, I'm gonna cut the oven down a little bit. Now, since I know the lamb chops and the mashed potato. What's it gonna take that long? I made a I made a tr another treat for you today. Today I'm gonna do a salad, a salad, a basic salad with a spring mix, but I'm gonna have a different components with it. Um, I'm gonna have tomatoes, cucumbers, um, broccoli, and a couple a couple of other items. But what I'm gonna do is once the lamb chops get ready, I'm gonna add the lamb chops on top of the sprinkle with uh, balsamic vinegar, mm. balsamic vinegar dressing. Okay, let's start that. Let's get that out of the way. Then we then we go put everything together. Okay, let me go to the refrigerator. <laughs> See, I got basic spring mix. Basic spring mix right there. You can get this at your at your local supermarket. You know, very, very, very easy to get. You can use romaine spring mix, you can use beer lettuce, you can use Use iceberg lettuce, but I prefer I prefer to use spring mix. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Here we go. There we go. Good and crispy. Yes. Now we're gonna switch skillets. Good marinade. Let me grab my tongue. Here we go. Yes. Oh yeah.
if you want a little bit of little bit of char on that, see how it is? Yes. A little bit of char on it. Oh yeah. Why what you think, you guys? Why did you do that? Why did I do it? Why did you switch to why some switch get it? Because I don't want to over overcook in this skillet right here. You know it's an oven skillet. If we slide that one right here. Okay. Now the oven is oven is off. Okay. Now, now we go. Ooh. What else? <laughs> I got another pair. <laughs> I got another pair. Okay. Now we're gonna get, get the salad going. <laughs> yes, what's the question? How long did the lamb chops stay in the oven? The lamb chops stayed in the oven exactly no more than eight to ten minutes. And I got some cucumbers right here. Okay. Slide this right here. Okay. How about some cherry tomatoes? Yeah, you know, see, you know, you get all these. All these components at your local supermarket. Okay. Now I got some fresh broccoli. <laughs> fresh broccoli right here. Okay. That's going. I'm going to finish that off with the last. Now I got some. Sharp cheddar, grated, bring just a little bit over it, a little bit. Now, my favorite, my favorite for a salad, I don't know about yourself, my favorite for the salad is, is craisins, you know, all the flavor. Okay. What temperatures do you cook the lamb chocks in the oven? If you're gonna if you're gonna slow cook them, slow cook them, cook them between two seventy five and three hundred. If you want to rush cook them like we do at the at the hotel, and so we already pan sear and we put them in the oven at three seventy five four hundred, so it could be a quick cook. So we can plate it up. Okay, we got the we almost got the salad ready. Okay, what I like to do is. Let's set this right here. Put a the time straight. Okay. Now I'm gonna put some balsamic vinaigrette over the top of it. But I'm still not through with the salad yet. I'm gonna wait to add the, the crunchy. Now this is the salad that's gonna go with the lamb chops. Okay. A good a good dish fill. Okay. We're gonna set slide that right here. Slide this kind of out the way. Now, one of the th one of the things I like to iterate on is for us eating is my pleasure. I, I love cooking and eating, but one of the things that I have to fire myself not doing is overeating, and that's 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 kind of been my problem through the last few years. And you know, I have to start going to the doctor, being more healthy. So I just try to teach us older Americans that we can have good food. You can't have your food seasoned. But like I always iterate is don't over season. Don't over season. You, can, you don't want to over season when you start cooking your food because you can always add more season to it as you prepare your plate or however, however you like it. Now, I know I'm a big hot sauce man and I love hot sauce on basically on a whole lot of things. But you know, just kind of, just kind of eat healthy. You know, we wanna, we wanna be with the grandkids. We wanna have the energy to, to go out and hang out with the grandkids and swing and run around. So, and by the way, I'm getting ready to be a grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ready to be a grandfather in four weeks. Four weeks. In four weeks, I'm gonna be a grandfather. Oh God! And I'm gonna have him in the kitchen too with a little <laughs> cook hat on and and an apron and a onesie on, sitting right here on the counter. Huh? Yeah, you sit. Oh, matter of fact, you see him next time. I'm gonna have him. Right. Well, I, I don't know where I'm gonna have him at, but, but he's gonna be close by me because he's gonna be a grandpa's boy. That's for sure. 
Okay, we got this already. Oh yeah. All right then. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do. A, you want to? We want to do an extra added treat. Let's do an extra added treat. I'm going back over to the stove again. We're gonna do an extra added treat. You want to do an extra added treat? We're gonna do one. All right then. I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go with this one. All right then. I had already pre-prepared some things, but uh, I think I'm gonna do some asparagus with a little bit of garlic. Garlic with it. Oh, it's gonna be nice. Garlic and butter. I do a, which one I prefer today. Since I want to eat healthy, I'm gonna go with some olive oil. We're going with some olive oil. I'm going to even go pretty and grab my little garlic out. Okay, I got a little spoon somewhere around here. Just add a little bit of garlic to it. What you guys think so far? It looks delicious. It looks delicious. Okay, who's going to come over and have dinner with me? Or lunch? It's lunch time. <laughs> Any takers? How about you guys in Nashville? Here we go. Okay. We're going to let they kind of get kind of a little bit, little bit more hot. Okay, here go the scissors right now. All right. Now. Okay, what I did with the, with the asparagus, I already had blanched the asparagus out. Okay, let me tell you a secret about the asparagus. You want them to sound like that, al dente. Okay. You want to see them have al dente. You don't want to overcook asparagus. When you cook asparagus, have some water already boiling. You cut the asparagus to the size that you want. Drop it in no more than two to three minutes. No more than two to three minutes. Yeah, that's good. Good. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more garlic to it. Little bit, little bit of sea salt. I always use sea salt. I got a little bit of black pepper. Bit, a little bit more. Olive oil. Always when you put your olive oil in, don't go straight down. Always go around because the, the oil will consume in the middle. Okay. Everybody say, how you be grabbing this food and stuff with your hands? Through all the years that I've been cooking, I don't have no feelings in, in my fingertips. Okay. Y'all see how it looks? See, see, it still got the green color, bright green color. How's our time doing, Jess? Yes. Uh, fifteen minutes. Okay, fifteen minutes. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Oh, twenty minutes. Okay. Now. We got we got that done. Now I'm gonna plate I'm gonna plate the asparagus up. Uh -huh. sorry y'all. Say out loud the chat is open. Do we have any questions? <laughs> the chat is open if you have any questions. I'm looking forward to answering questions. <laughs> you know, one of the things it is that you know we all we all can become Cook, which I I get better every day. I'm looking at recipes and going through seminar almost every week, almost every month, just to get just to get better. And we're gonna go ahead and plate this up. We're gonna have this out the way. Okay. So what did you put in there? The, 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 the asparagus has olive oil, pinch of sea salt, pinch of black pepper, and garlic. Now, if you want to get more creative, you can add some white wine to it. 
two tablespoons of white wine. Okay, we got that ready. Slide that to the side and put that back in here. And one of the things that I like to do is kind of decorate the plate. Gotta, gotta decorate the plate. And with this, with this asparagus, you can always, always add some roasted red peppers to it. It will, it will bring the color out and will bring the flavor out too. Okay, we got that ready. Now, would you like to go ahead and start plating up our, our main dish? Here we go. Now, with a, with a nice plate, I'm gonna slide this, slide this over here. Okay, grab the spoon. Yeah, I think I'm in. Yes, what's the question? While you were preparing the asparagus, is the lamb chop still cooking? The lamb chop is shut down. The oven is down. I cut the oven off. Okay. That's one of the things is I didn't want to overcook them. And I do have some more. Another question. Yes. Can you remind them how long? If you fast cooking the lamb chops, what you would do, you would pan stir them from two to three minutes on each side. You have your oven cranked up to 375, 400 if you got a convection oven. It won't take that long for them to be prepared. Now, if you slow cook them, I would slow cook them at between 275, 275 to 300. Maybe you can go a little bit longer there. All depends how much time you got before you serve your dinner. Now, if I do a lamb, a roast of lamb for, for dinner for us, I usually put it in the oven. Um, I say at seven in the morning, and I usually pull it out between between eight and eight thirty. All depends how how I want it cooked. Now, medium rare, medium is going to cook less time. But if you want it medium well, well done, you're looking at more like maybe forty minutes, forty five minutes. All depends what's your pound, what's your weight of the lamb or the whole rack of lamb. Okay, here we go. I always got to start off in the middle. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. We're going to slide this over to the side. Okay, we got this. We got this in. Now, here comes the fun part. Here we go. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the, I'm going to make the glaze now. I got a little bit of soy sauce, just a little. So you can take for a fourth of a cup. And add the honey to it, or honey. I have a cup of honey. That's going to drizzle over the top of it. You want to kind of, kind of stir it a little bit, making sure it's okay. If, if all the mixtures mixed together. Down here? You want? Yes, I do. Okay. You go to bubbly, right? Now, come on. You see how see how it's cooked, forming around the edges. These are skillets. I think every household should have skillets that you can cook on on a, on your on your grill on your stove, and some that you can put in the oven. They're pretty reasonable too, y'all. Yeah. I got this one. Got this one for nine dollars. Oh yeah. Just to confirm, that was. Mm -hmm. One fourth cup of soy sauce and half a cup of honey. Yes, you want to have more honey than soy sauce. Oh yeah, here we go. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna 
That's how you want it. That's right. Okay. Now we're going to see the slide that right here. Now we're going to bring the lamb chops out on oh, my plate. Okay. Well, okay. One of the things that okay. Here we go. We get ready to flake this up. <laughs> Yes. Now it's the play though. Nice. Okay, these are the four going on top of the salad. I'm gonna slide this, slide this over here. Now, now what I did was yesterday to make it even better, I did some onions. I, I shoestring some onions and I fried, fried them in some canola oil. And this is gonna be one of the garnishes going around it. Have that when you bite into the bite into the um bite into the um potatoes, you're gonna have a little bit of crunch to it. Now I'm gonna take the sauce. Okay, like this back over here. Okay, let's finish it up. This right here. I can't see it. Okay, can't see it. What do you think? You see it? I got it coming up like a crown. But if you want to do the whole onion strings. And have the whole onion, like the wheel, you could put it right over the top of that. Or you can get so many chef hats to put over the top of it. <laughs> it, it just all depends, all depends how you how you how you want to do it. You know, that, that's 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 it, you know. It's one of the things that you're cooking for your family. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna slide this over. <laughs> okay. Now we get ready to finish up the salad. Okay. okay. So now what I'm doing is taking the, the lamb off the bone. That's good. Let me switch my glove. <laughs> That's real good. So you don't want to overbear your salad with your lamb. You want to have just enough take to blend in with the uh, balsamic vinegar. And plus the lamb has already have seasoning on it. The balsamic and the and the soy sauce and the ginger is gonna is gonna blend in real well. That to the scene. I think, are you going to eat this afternoon, Jessica? <laughs> I think she's going to eat this food. 
Okay, what I use it to do is just chop it up. I do it in strips. Are we done with the stove? Yes, we're done with the stove. We done. We done with everything. I might do something. Yes, we got. Yeah, we got five minutes, six minutes. Okay. So you don't want to keep the stove on. Yeah, keep it on. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same, same garnish. Matter of fact, mm. add a little bit of. Uh, all right. There it goes. You see how the balsamic uh, reduced? I made this yesterday. See, only thing you have to do to it is shake it up. Add a little bit. Okay. And you know, I got to go with a little bit of onion. <laughs> There we go. We're gonna move this tomato up the way. Okay, now. Now we got three different, three different dishes. Okay, get this clean up so we okay. Let's start with the lamb first. The salad and the asparagus. What you guys think? Give me some kind of comment. I'm waiting for questions. But if you want, if you don't want to do you, if you don't want to do the rack of lamb, you can do the lamb chops. The lamb chops is very well and stuff. They they cut just like a uh, just like a pork chop, and they you know they they pretty good. But I always prefer the lamb the lamb on the rack of lamb because you know I couldn't find, I couldn't find the chef hats. That's the only thing I couldn't find. You know how. They used to have on the the, the uh, cooking shows and stuff that the chef hats that's on top of the end of the bone. And one of the other things that you can do with your lamb too, that slide this up here. Uh, kind of move this over a little bit. Um, okay, I hope they can see all three of them. Can they see all? Mm -hmm. Can you slide it down a little bit? Slide it down, Jess. There we go. Is the lamb warm when you're cooking it? I wonder. Is the lamb warm when you plate it? Yeah, the lamb is what the lamb is warm, and the, and when you add the sauce to it, it bring uh, bring the more heat out of the lamb because by me pan searing it, the heat is locked into the meat, and once you once you cut into it, it the heat just come out, especially with the sauce over the top of it, especially the mashed potatoes be um be piper hype too. All of the components just bring more heat to it. It's just how I'm doing. Okay, I got one more glove. <laughs> I got more more gloves. Okay, one of the things you can do you do when you're doing your doing your lamb chops. Uh five minutes. Uh huh? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Now, see, one of the things that you can do with the lamb chops, you can scrape it. You can scrape it down if you want to. You know, if you if you want to, because sometimes it has silver skin. See the other ones that I did didn't have silver skin to it. So you get get the silver skin off of it. Just like just like cleaning the ribs. You know, when you pull your silver skin off, it just usually come off. But it's it's one of the things that it's your choice if you want to do it or not. Chef, okay. here's some of the comments. Here's some of the comments. Thank okay. you. Looks good. Great. Uh, looks yummy. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no problem. My it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. And you know, one of the things that I I I, I like to 
for us to explain to, you know, to the ARP community out there, you know, it's just, you know, when you when you cook and enjoy it, enjoy, especially if you're cooking for yourself, if you want to cook you a nice T-bone steak or uh, a sea bass and everything, enjoy cooking it. You know, always put your own twist to it. You know, I give you the basic knowledge, but the meal that I prepare is one I prepare for the, for the recipe. But if you think you want something else when you're preparing, preparing your, your, your meal, go ahead and do it. That's how we come up with all these different recipes. 20 years ago, you didn't hear about you no know, gluten or anything. Now we got a whole shelf of gluten, everything. You, you know, a lot of people going into fusion cooking now. You know, one of the things that fusion cooking and stuff, you know, you, you look, use less seasoning and more, I say organic vegetables more, but no matter what they say, organic vegetable, organic garlic, everything. It doesn't mean it's going to be more healthier for you. You know, more healthy is, is when you eat in moderation. Eating different fried foods, all these different steaks and anything like that, because anything that we consume in our body, man, has nothing to do with it. You're not going to get all of it, even if you try to burn a steak. If you barbecue on a regular charcoal grill, you think that charcoal coming up through your meat don't have any kind of toxin in it. No, it do. <laughs> it do. It's just eating in moderation. It's totally eating in moderation. And one of the things that I like to say when I uh, do, a, do a lecture or anything, that I always, I always tell people, you know, always remember, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get all chemicals out of, out of your food, especially this thing of tomato. Tomatoes got seeds in it. How you gonna, how you gonna have any chemicals in it? You need something to grow the tomatoes. Uh, <laughs> it's just, just one of the things I like to, just to make sure people realize this. You know, just eat in moderation. You know, drink your water. Have to have to drink your water. That's that's for sure. And I've been on a diet coke kick lately, and mm -hmm. I can tell my energy level is really going down. Now I'm doing lecture lights. Oh God, I don't like I don't like this senior age. I wish I can turn it back another well five years, five five ten years. I mean I'll be okay because I know my grandson is gonna drive me crazy. <laughs> you know, even though. But is there any other questions I need to? Want to ask? There, there was one question about what bread do you suggest with this? Bread. Ooh. My favorite bread. No, not fresh. I would do Christini's. I would do a Christini. I get a, a fresh loaf, cut it, cut it in a little slices, put it on the put it on, put some uh, put it on a pan, uh, a sheet pan. Put some olive oil over the top of it, sea salt, a little bit of black pepper, bake it in the oven no more than at I say at 350, bake it in the oven no more, no more than 10, 15 minutes. Then flip it on the other side and do the same thing. And when you come out, let it rest. And when you bite into the, the crunchy of the potatoes with the um with the fried onions on it and that crostini with a little bit of garlic and olive oil and salt. The virtual event at aarp.org slash tm follow aarp tennessee on facebook thank you y'all have a wonderful week and the springtime is coming and let's get ready to do y'all have a wonderful weekend